absolutely broke. If you remember back, you go back three and a half years ago, you will see that uh, there were reports, actually, even from the fake news, that Hamas, Hezbollah, they didn't have any money because Iran had no money to give them. They wanted to survive. And I, I didn't want to be bad there. I just didn't want Iran to have a nuclear weapon. I said, you know, we're going to make a great deal. Everybody's going to be happy. You're going to be rich as hell again. Everything's going to be great. But you cannot have a nuclear weapon. Now they're 31 days away from having a nuclear weapon. These numbskulls have done nothing. They had, it, it would have been such an easy deal. They wanted to make a deal. And then because of the results of the election, they said, let's wait it out. Nobody ever contacted them. They're going to have a nuclear weapon in 31 days, the, the likes of which the power of nuclear weaponry is uh, not describable. Actually, it's not describable. And that's where we are right now. This country has regressed to a point that it's so embarrassing to even talk about when you look at what's happened. Just three years, a little more than three years, uh, what's happened to our country is so sad to see. Nikki stabbed the Republican Party in the back by siding with Barack Hussein Obama against the Trump travel ban, which kept us safe. That travel ban was a, it was a gift from God. It kept us safe as a country. We didn't have the problems that other countries had. Biden and his thugs are desperate to stop us because they know that we are the only ones who can stop them. We're the only ones that can stop them. You know, this is the greatest movement in the history of the United States. There's never been a movement like this. Never been a movement like this. Never. In an interview yesterday, a very sad interview, actually, Attorney General Merrick Garland head of Crooked Joe Biden's Department of Injustice, actually stated that he wanted to speed up the so-called election integrity witch hunt against President Trump. And I say, if he wanted to do that, why didn't they file the lawsuit three years earlier? Because they wanted to have it right smack in the middle of the election. You know what it comes to? They want to start the trial, and I think it's going to be delayed very substantially because of all the things you see happening including what's happening in Georgia with the horrible case of Fannie Willis. It's, it's actually pronounced Fani. It's F-A-N-I, but you pronounce it Fani, a little French accent there. Fani. But that's a terrible thing. But so Merrick Garland, I didn't think he'd be like this. Because I understood it, you know, looked at him. He, to me, he was a very respected uh, yeah. justice, judge, very respected for a long time. I never thought this would happen with him. He was liberal, but he was a respected guy, and I never thought this would happen, but he wants to speed it up. But I say they want to speed it up. They could have started it three years ago. Three years ago. This would have been over two years, and uh, now they want to speed it up. You know why they want to speed it up? Because I'm leading in the election. This is election interference at a level that nobody has ever seen before. It's because they know that I did nothing wrong and they want to get going and it's by the way uh and by the way what the hell ever happened to the biden boxes deal what's with biden boxes where did that ever go they kept saying trump they raided mar-a-lago you remember they raided my home how would you like to have your home raided nice home they raided my home whatever happened remember he kept classified documents under the wheels of his corvette he loves that corvette in an open garage with no security. Whatever happened? Let's check that. Whatever happened to Biden, the Biden box? He had massive numbers. He, he was taking stuff when he was a senator, which that you're not allowed to do. I was protected by the Presidential Records Act, by the way. But whatever happened to that boxes deal with, with Joe Biden? And why isn't Garland going after the ones who rigged the 2020 election why is he always going after the ones who are complaining about the rigging? They only go after the ones complaining. Now, we have to have, we have, to have honest elections in all these cases. Biden and Garland were weaponizing law enforcement for really high-level election interference. That's what they're doing now. He's got nothing he can run on. He always says, Donald Trump is a threat. He's a threat to democracy. That's right. That's right. MAGA. MAGA. We've got to stop MAGA. What does MAGA mean, Joe? Uh, make America great again. We've got to stop Make America great again. Think of it. We've got to stop Make America great again. 
But I don't do too much imitation of him because every time I do it, every single time, they have it on television, like uh, fake NBC, fake CBS, <laughs> fake ABC, ABC, not to mention CNN, MSDNC, and Fox. But every time I do it, if I imitate them, they show me Donald Trump spoke poorly last night. He could hardly say a word. So it's very dangerous. You know, two weeks ago, three weeks ago, I, I hardly do it anymore. Maybe I'll do it for New Hampshire. I'm desperate to get, I, I'm desperate to get you a vote. I'm desperate to get you a vote. Maybe I'll do it. But I don't do it because what they do is if I'm sarcastic, or, like I, a lot of times I'll say, and President Obama is doing a lousy job, meaning that Obama is running the show. They'll say, Donald Trump doesn't know who our president is. No, no. Because cognitively, you know, I don't know if you saw, but a few months ago, I took a cognitive test my doctor gave me. I said, give me a cognitive test just so we can, you know, because you know what the standards were. And I aced it. I also took one when I was in, but I also took one when I was in the White House. No. I'll let you know when I go bad. I really think I'll be able to tell you. But someday we go bad. But you know, I've had, and they always say, like, like Haley, she talks about, yeah, we don't need 80 year old. Well, I don't mind being 80, but I'm 77. That's a big difference. Okay. But I have people, I have one friend who became a very rich man, became a billionaire. His whole life he didn't do well. He was in a certain business, didn't do well. He turned 80. He made a billion dollars between the age of 80 and 90. He made all his money from 80 to 90. They always like to mention age. It's not age, different people, different strokes, right? But what it is is, think of that, made all of his money. I know people that are 90, I know one person, 94 years old, a phenomenal, his mind is as sharp as it's ever been. I feel my mind is stronger now than it was 25 years ago. Is that possible? I really do. Now, Biden can't say that. Look, you know he can't say that. You know he can't say that. You know there's something going on. But when I imitated, so a few weeks ago, I imitated, because you, as you know, he can never find the stairs. You know how many stairs? One, two. We have two on the side. Three, four. There's one back here. Then there's an emergency. You got like six or seven. This is not a big platform. So I imitated it, and everybody had a great time. You know the way he finishes the speech? The speeches usually last about two minutes, yeah? So, thank you. Two or three minutes. They're not long. This is not Winston Churchill. He used to speak for a, never have so few, done so much for so many. Do you know what that was about the Spitfire? He was a slightly good speaker. But this isn't Winston Churchill. But they last very, very short periods of time because the energy runs low, you know? It's got a something going on there. The key with him is to get him going for a long period of time. Let's see how it looks. But when he leaves, he always, you ever notice he always points? He goes, thank you. He always goes, like the Heisman Trophy. And then, but he leaves. And so I, I they had a wall. We'll pretend that's a wall back there, but they had a wall. I don't think there's a stair in the back, so he would find that area and send it. But you know what? So there's a wall. And I, I imitated him going to the wall. And everybody cracked up. We were all having a good time. And the fake news said Donald Trump was embarrassed tonight. He couldn't find his way off the stage. Can you believe? No, no. They are the most dishonest people. You know the thing, you know the thing where they, we talked about a dictator. Donald Trump wants to be a dictator. So Sean Hannity, who's a fantastic guy, by the way. Sean Hannity, I did a town hall with him two weeks ago. And he said, all right, let's put this to rest. He thought he was doing me a favor. And I wanted to be cute. I always got to be cute. He said, listen, you don't want to be a dictator or anything, do you? I said, Sean, I only want to be a dictator for one day. And I'm going to be a dictator, Sean, for one day. And I'm going to close up the border, and I'm going to drill, baby, drill. And after that, I'm not going to become a dictator. Right? So here's what the fake news does. It's so horrible. So I said, I want to be a dictator for one day. And then if you go on just like 10 seconds, it says the two things, right? We're going to have a great voter. We're going to 
drill, baby, drill, those two things. We're going to have energy. It's going to be, we're going to make so much money. We're not going to have to worry about your social security. So I said those two things. I said, I'm going to be a dictator, and they cut it. So all over television said, Donald Trump wants to be a dictator. Listen, to I'm going to be a dictator, cut. Now that's really, and I said, for well, one day, and I did, I did also finish and said, and then after that, I'm not going to be a dictator ever again. So we were having fun, and they've got me, they've got me saying I want to be a dictator. These are sick people, I'm telling you. We have to straighten out our free press. But Joe Biden, Joe Biden, Joe Biden is a threat to democracy for a number of reasons. Take a look at what he's doing with weaponization. What he's doing with the weaponization that we just discussed is terrible. But he's a threat for another reason, very big. He's grossly incompetent. That's the biggest threat that we have to democracy. We're going to end up in World War III with this guy running things. And you know, it's interesting. Until I got indicted, I never talked this way about him. I, you probably know. Until I got, who is his Azir friend? You can get him out of here. Get out of here. Get out of here. Go ahead, you can throw him out. is getting serious, so now we know we're getting serious. Now, he's just a disturbed person. Remember that used to happen all the time? People used to call for it. Where is that? We want it back. But no, probably we're, we're really now into political season, and that is happening. It's happening, and the people in this room know what any probably knows too. And a lot of those guys, by the way, are paid by Soros and these people. You know that. They're, they're troublemakers. A lot of those people are paid they go outside. In fact, they're MAGA people, but they can't help it. They say, look, you gave me so I said, do what you're doing. This is only happening, all of this, because all of the weaponization, because we're leading so much in the polls, especially if you look, we're leading her by a lot. Ron is probably finished. He's probably finished. Uh, may he rest in peace. In the new Redfield Wilton poll, just came out a little while ago, it's Trump. 72%, Haley 9%, and DeSanctimonious 9 But that's why you have to get out and vote, though. We have to keep those margins in Nevada. We're going to be there next week. You know what we're going to get in Nevada? 100% of the vote. 100%. You know why? They looked at the polls, and they decided we're not going to play there. So next week is Nevada, a great state, and uh, DeSanctimonious just announced he's pulling out of Nevada. In South Carolina, you just saw all of the leaders, just about everybody. We have almost everybody. Respected Pulse, a very respected guy. Tony Fabrizio, have you ever heard of him? He's Italian by persuasion. I think. But you know, he's a great pollster. John McLaughlin, great pollster. He has some great pollsters. Tony Fabrizio has it here. 64, think of it. Trump at 64%, Haley at 25%, Ron DeSantis. What the hell happened to an 8%? We're leading in New Hampshire, but take nothing for granted because polls only matter if you get out and vote. You have to get out and vote. The polls can be so disruptive. You know, I used to get polls like in Wisconsin. They said Trump is down 19 points. Washington Post, ABC, Washington Post, ABC, fake news, Washington Post. And they used to go... And they had me down, actually, 18 points. Trump is down eight. I said, it can't be. Wisconsin's a great state. I just gave a speech. We had 38,000 people. There's no way I'm down 18 points. And our poll said we were doing well there. I ended up winning that state. And I went to John McLaughlin, the great pollster. I said, 
how can they say I'm down 18 and I end up winning in the election, winning it? I said, why don't they say five or four or three? He said, because at three or four or five, you go out and the people say, I'm going to go and vote. At 19 or 18 or 17, they say, darling, let's stay home. And who can blame them? They don't want to go out and vote. But when you're down like anything below five, and he taught me this, I didn't realize it. So they'd rather ruin their reputation. They'd be down 18 points, something like that. So they'd rather ruin their reputation for the next cycle than say he's down 2% or he's up 1% or whatever it is. I ended up winning. But I said to him, what does that mean? He said, you would have won by much more because many people, when they saw 18%, they say, no, the pollsters are just as dishonest as these people back here, which is saying a lot. We're also dominating crooked Joe Biden in the general election. We're up eight points over Biden in the new Rasmussen poll that just came out. While Haley, Nikki Haley is getting clobbered in that poll. The radical left Democrats rigged the presidential election of 2020, and we're not going to allow them to rig the presidential election of 2024. Every time the radical left Democrats, Marxists, communists, and fascists indict me, I consider it a great badge of honor. Because I mean, it's, it's so true, it's so true. These people, what they do, it's really backfired on them, I guess. Because I'm being indicted for you, and never forget, our enemies want to take away my freedom, because I will never let them take away your freedom. I will never let that happen. They want to silence me, because I will never let them silence you. And in the end, they're not after me, they're after you. I just happen to be standing in the way. I am in the way. I always will be. We're delighted to be joined tonight by Hillsborough County Attorney John Coffin, Belknap County Sheriff Bill Wright, RNC National Committeeman Bill O'Brien, Congressman, he's a very low-key individual, Congressman Matt Gates. Hello, Congressman. Where's Matt Gates? Hello, Matt. I didn't know you were going to be here, Matt. Wow. Hi, Matt. And a man who is the greatest mayor in the history of New York City with great courage, Rudy Giuliani. He's a popular guy. I tell you, he's the greatest mayor, not even close. From the very first day that we take back the White House from crooked Joe Biden, and his band of radical left lunatics, I believe we are going to have four of the greatest years in the history of our country. We had the four, we had, we had the greatest economy in history. Think of all the things we did, rebuilt the military, biggest tax cuts ever, biggest regulation cuts ever. The next Trump economic boom will begin on November 5th, 2024. That's what's going to happen. And we're going to bring America together through unprecedented success. You know, when we were just prior to COVID coming in and we did a great job, didn't get, we got credit for economy, we got credit for military, we got credit for foreign policy, never got the credit that we deserve. We had this horrible scourge coming into our country all over the world, all over the world, people dying, we were all over the world. We never got the credit. We did a great job with the ventilators and all of the things we did, but we never got it. And it's uh, just incredible, but four incredible years under my leadership we built the single greatest economy, think of it, in the history of the world. There's, our country has never been so successful, especially in that period, that long period of time before the China virus came to our shores. With record low unemployment rates for African Americans, Hispanic Americans, Asian Americans, veterans, young people, old people, people with diplomas, people without diplomas, people that went to MIT, like my uncle, who was there for 40 years as a professor, the longest serving professor. Rudy, did you know that my uncle was at MIT, Dr. John Trump, for 40 years? He's the longest serving uh, professor in the history of him. He had three degrees. One wasn't good enough for him, but he was great. He was great. My father's brother, 
Think of it, we had gas prices at $1.87 a gallon, and there was no inflation. We had no inflation. Energy caused inflation. Energy caused inflation. Together, we ended the NAFTA disaster, the worst trade deal ever made, and we replaced it with the brand new USMCA, the best 